Hey, this is Jay from A Stitch in Time in Bemidji, Minnesota, doing a little lesson on how to do uh, lettering, applique lettering with Tackle Twill. I got some tips and tricks to make it go a little faster and easier for you. So to get started, we're going to have a, a new file open. We're going to go up to select lettering. I'm going to click down in the opening here, and it's going to come up with the last one that I used, which is the one we're going to have here, but I'll show you how to get to it. Under the font category, you can change this to applique fonts, and then all of these that are here are going to be the ones that you could choose. You can click up in here once, and you can just scroll through and look at them. All these are all the ones that you can use for applique, but I think the ones I'm going to use today are going to be the blocked. Underneath it, where a text, I'm going to type in the name of our lake, Lake Bemidji. It is the first city on the Mississippi. And the, most people don't realize the Mississippi flows north for about the first 45 miles and gets to Lake Bemidji where it turns and heads south. So there's a little geography lesson for the day. Now I'm going to click apply and you will see it. It's, it's giving me this warning. You've created segments whose widths, widths exceed the recommended maximum stitch length of 10 millimeters, which is almost 3 eighths of an inch. So we're going to click OK. And we're going to work with that here in just a little bit. The height is currently 2.48. I want to bring that down to 2.0. And I just type that in, and it still is going to give me that same warning. I'm going to leave that up here because I want to know when we change that. I'm also going to go down here to, uh, well, let's just fix that right away. If I scroll down here to where it says applique, I'm going to change that width to be 2.7. That's the width of my satin stitch. If you notice, all of a sudden, I don't get that warning anymore. Now I want to be able to see the whole design here, so I go up to the top. I'm going to go to the zoom, and I'm going to touch that little white square. That's going to zoom it to the entire design. So you'll be able to see that right here. And I want to do a couple more things here yet. If you notice at the very top, my length is still 16 and a quarter inches, and my maximum hoop size on my multi-needle is 14 inches. Now, if you have a new luminaire, you could probably do that, but 16 inches is going to take a pretty good-sized billboard of a back or a chest to be able to put that on. So you might want to be watching how big you make this so that you can know how to work with that. But I'm going to take and adjust the spacing between the letters. I'm going to bring this down to 0.8 between the letters. And so everything is, is looking pretty good. I can still see spaces between all of them except between L and A. I'm going to zoom in on that by just collecting my zoom tool and zoom in on that area. See how they're touching here a little bit? Well, I can very easily change that by getting my text tool again and go by, put it right back over top of that diamond. I can click that and I can change the amount of spacing in between there and get a little bit more. There we go. Now I have a little bit more spacing in there. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to shrink the spacing up between the B and the A just to make it a little bit closer. I want a little more gap than over here, but I don't want it quite as big. So I'm trying to get my, my uh, dimensions down as much as possible. Again, zoom to the whole thing. Now notice there's still a Lake Bemidji. There's still definitively a, a more space between there. I think that's good. I might just take that just a little bit more to the right to give a little bit more space. Now my width is 14.45. It's still a little bit too long, but I'm going to show you how to fix that. If I go up and grab my Select tool, it changes and gives me black handles around the edges. And I can simply come over here and I'm going to click and drag this in. Now what you want to be looking at is right down here in this bottom left hand corner. This is my total size of what is selected. So when I go out here and I click on that and I drag that over, I'm going to bring that down to about 13.8 just to make sure that I have plenty of space to work with. And now, there we go. Now I also want to add Minnesota underneath here because you need to know where Lake Bemidji is. And so I can uh, just click outside of here and go back up and click the alphabet or the, the text tool again. I'm going to click right underneath here somewhere. Now it comes back to the block font. Well, I want to use a different font, but it's going to be a more of a scripty font. So instead of looking for the applique, I'm going to go to the script style fonts. I'm going to click up in here. 
and scroll the whole way down to what is called strokes. I think that's going to be a nice one. I'm going to type in there Minnesota. Minnesota is the land where many are cold but few are frozen. And so we're going to click apply. And my computer is working really slow this afternoon. And there it is. Now I'm going to change the color on that just to give us a little something different to look at while we're working at here. I'm just going to make that a brown just for the sake of it. We'll be coming and tweaking that a little bit more later. So now the last thing I want to do is I want to align these two designs up. And so the way we can do that is I can either I can go up here and grab the select tool. And I can drag a box that encapsulates both of them. That's one way. Or I can go Control A on my uh, keyboard, on my computer. And then I go up here to the Arrange Tools. And I'm going to go Horizontal Center. And now it has centered Minnesota under Lake Bemidji. Okay, now the next step we have to do yet before we go and save our design is we need to save the scan and cut file, the file that will actually cut out all these individual letters. And it's really simple. All you need to do is select the lettering for the applique and then you go up here to your tools bar and you're going to choose the scan and cut button. And what it does is it looks at that and says, ah, there's some applique material in here. And so it automatically creates an artwork file for that image. And now here we go and we can go export FCM and it says where do you want to put this? Notice it's going to be an FCM. People say well, what's that? That is for cutting machine. <laughs> but it's only for the brother cutting machine. It doesn't work for all the other brands out there. But for FCM and we're going to go Lake Bemidji um, whoops, Lake Bemidji uh, SNC for scan and cut. And we're going to click save and then now that has now saved that I can close this out now we're going to save this here and that's going to be all ready to go and we're going to go up to file and we're going to want to save this as a brf file now I already have one in here so we're going to save that on top of that that is if I want to come back in here and change something else change the the width of my satin stitches or the type of the font or anything else that I want to I need to save it in the BRF format that saves all that detail it's different than the PES but there's some things that it locks in us that we can't do I'm going to show you why in a little bit so I'm going to save it as BRF and we're going to replace that yes we're all good to go now notice down here if I go to stitch this out it's going to stitch out the L and then it's going to stitch out the a afterwards and I have to sit here and do one letter at a time well that's really putsy I don't I just, I'd rather it would do all the placements and then I ta tack down or I put all of my letters on top of it with my adhesive or iron and one however we're using whatever tackle tool we're using and and then let it go back and do the whole thing I don't want to sit there and babysit every single letter but if I go up here I'm gonna go up to the home I'm going to select the, actually we're just going to select just the lettering. If I go up and click color sort, it doesn't do it because it says, well, this is applique. You have to do one letter at a time. Well, no, we don't. I'm going to give you a little secret. I'm going to save this as a, uh, as a PES and then watch what happens. I'm going to go file, save as and we're going to change this to PES and you can use whatever version you have in here and we're going to click save and yes I, I was playing with this before so we're going to replace that and we're going to click yes and now I'm going to close this completely out and I'm going to go back and open it back up from the same thing and I don't want the BRF file I want the PES file and notice that it brings them all up these are all separate over here so I'm going to select just I'm going to select all these things. I'm going to go color sort and look what it is. It reduced 30 colors. So now if you go to play this out, you're going to have, it's going to do all the placement stitches and then it's going to do all the tack downs and then it'll do all the satin stitches and you will be good to go. And it saves you a lot of time, especially for those of you who have uh, home machines that with a single needle or things like that. 
So there's a little lesson on how to do it. If you look on the, uh, if you go to your embroidery album where I have here, I'm going to go to my class time where I have it saved. And there's going to be three files. There's going to be Lake, Lake Bemidji SNC. That's my scan and cut file. Lake Bemidji BRF. That's a file I'm going to have to tweak if I ever need to. And this is the file that I want to take to my embroidery machine. Now, obviously, if you have a different brand of embroidery machine, you can do the same thing there as well. But that is the way that you do this. Well, thanks so much for watching. And stay tuned as we'll be doing some more lessons on software here in the next few weeks.